Hi, welcome to the second video on how to use your TI Inspire CX CAS calculator uh, for the AV calculus test. Uh, here's the quick outline of what I'm going to be talking about how to graph functions, how to change the window size, but there are many ways, uh, how to zoom, how to remove labels, how to find zeros, intersection points, max mins, uh, set up a table and use a table, and how to store values. So, there's my calculator. Um, go ahead, if you have a lot of stuff on your calculator, let's go ahead and clear everything out. So I'm going to go to document, one, one. It's going to ask you to save. And that basically clears all your open tabs. Since today we're graphing, I'm going to go ahead and open a graph here. Let's make this a little larger. OK, so let's say I want to graph a function, um, like e to the x. E to the x. And, and I want to graph another function. So you hit tab, and the purpose of this is going to recall, it's going to bring up your next equation. If I wanted to change e to the x, I, I just click up. But since I don't, I'm just going to go right here and go 4 minus x squared. This is going to be my second equation. And there's the second graph. Um, you can see this f1 is kind of in the way, so I'm going to move it off to the side here. And then F2 is down here. Now, this is a, a, something you kind of always want to do. But see how the red one's on top? I'm going to move this red label to the top. And the blue one's on the bottom. So I'm going to move the blue one to the bottom. It's kind of important. I know it's just a little thing. But we always want to identify the top and the bottom. And you'll, you'll see why later. Next, I kind of want to make this picture a little bit better. So I can change the window size. Um, you can see right here, I this this intersection is around negative two, so I only need pretty much this outline right here, all the cursor. I don't really need a lot of the information. So there's so many ways of changing the window size. Oh, and by the way, to move a label, you can hover over this. You can either hold this button down right here for 1.2 seconds or hit control center click and that closes the little hand so I can close the hand and then move it so definitely practice uh, feel free to pause the video if you need to so let's change the window size here's option one not recommended, but you should know all the options of your calculator. Go ahead and double click this until you get it to look like this. And just type in AV negative 3. Enter. Enter over here. Uh, let's say I want. Four. And that looks pretty good. But let's say I want to get rid of this one. Negative. So that's one way of doing it. Let's say I make a mistake. I can actually undo. So I can go control, control. And I think that was the original picture. So that's option one. What I'm going to do right now is see if I can just copy this one. No, I, don't have, I don't have to undo. Control, copy. So I'm just going to modify this one. So you can see I have two windows. They're exactly the same. And if you go control up, 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 up it has both. I'm just going to modify one of them. So remember, option one, just double click what you want to change. Option two, go ahead and hit menu, window, window settings. So here we lose the picture, but I still remember it was about negative. Let's say negative 4 this time. Positive 4. The scale is auto. That's fine. You can leave it auto. Uh, but since these numbers are 4 and negative 4, I'm just going to have the scale be 1. The y min, um, let's make that negative 5. 
Google IMAX. And scale. I'll just make it one. Okay. And there's my graph. I'm just going to move that label again up there. And this one's down. So if we look at the outline here, we talked about how to graph, how to change the window size. So now let's talk about zoom. I'm going to go back to my first window. So to zoom, I can hit menu, zoom, box. That's one option. I can zoom in, zoom standard, all these features. So I'm going to zoom box. And if you notice, my cursor has changed. I now have this weird little cursor. It's asking for the first corner. You can put, make this the first corner, this one. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to make this bottom left my first corner. You click once, and now you're going to draw a box. And it's like there. And it zooms in. Now you can see the disadvantage to using zoom. It gives you very weird numbers. 3.58. We don't know. Well, I think the scale is 0 0.2, but kind of hard to tell. Um, so the zoom is, is a great feature, but you do lose your nice numbers. Um, and also, notice right here, see that little icon? It says you're in the zoom feature. So I want to exit zoom, so just hit escape. And now I'm out of that feature. Um, I'm going to move this right here. And there we go. Let's say, for example, I made a mistake, and I'm not very happy with this. I could go Control Undo, or this is a great feature: hit Menu, Zoom, Standard Option Five. What that does is it resets it back to uh, 10 on the left, 10 on the right, 6.6 .6 top and bottom. And there's my original graph again. I'm going to go ahead and go back to this screen. I kind of like this one. And let's move forward. So we talked about how to graph functions, how to change the window size, and how to zoom. And moving the labels, you've seen that a few times now. Just hover over what you want, close the hand by center clicking about 1.2 seconds, and then moving it where you want. Always try and move your labels where they belong. For example, the red one's on top, so I move the red one to the top. The blue ones on the bottom, the blue ones on the bottom. That's kind of very important, and you'll see why in, in your calculus class. Next, how to find zeros. So, um, you can see I can predict the zeros right here at 2 and negative 2. To actually find them, hit menu, analyze graph, 0. It's asking which graph. If you only have one graph, you're not going to get this question. I want the red graph. So I'm going to select that one. Lower bound. You can see my cursor has changed. The calculator is asking, where do you want to start searching? I want to start searching right around here. Upper bound. Where do you want to stop searching? Right there. And there's my zero. And again, I can move that as well. I can find this zero over here the same way. So go ahead and do that. Try and find this. Try and practice find the zero. Menu, analyze graph, zero. This graph, lower bound, upper bound, and there's my zero. The blue one does not have a zero because it's E to DX. It's, there's an asymptote here, so it's, you're never going to find it. Next. How to find the intersection? I'm going to do, do this twice, so I'm actually going to copy this again. I'm going to go control up. It's highlighted. Control C for copy. And then control V. I would only do that, I mean, we're only doing it just for, for this video. You really wouldn't need to do that on your own. And I'm going to find this intersection and this intersection right here. Menu, analyze graph, intersection. It's asking for lower bound. So I want to be on the left of the intersection. 
with once. Scroll to the right, click again, and there's my intersection. And look at all those decimal spots. We really do need those for the AP times. If your calculator does not have all these decimals, uh, please check out the first video. It's called uh, Inspire 101 on how to set up your calculator for the AP test. And this point right here, um, same thing, menu, analyze graph, intersection. It can be on the left of the intersection, past the intersection, and there's my intersection. And I'm going to move them out of the way. That's option one. Option two is actually really interesting. So I'm going to go back to this one. It does not have an intersection. Um, I'm going to get this. I'm going to delete this one actually. Just get it out of the way. So it's not there. And I'm going to go to menu, analyze graph, conics. I think I might have to update my, my uh, software here. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I remember now. It's under geometry. Geometry, points, lines, intersection points. That's what it is. It's going to ask you for the graphs. I'm going to select that one and that one. And it finds all the intersection points at one time, which is actually very cool. So I don't have to do the, that process over and over again. So again, you go to menu, geometry, points and lines, intersection. Um, you can see right here, I'm in this mode, so I'm going to hit escape again. And now it gets rid of it. So that's how you find intersection points, either individually or all at once. Max in. Um, let's find the max. I know the max is at 0, 4, but I want to find it mathematically. So, menu, analyze graph, max. It's asking which graph, the red. Where do you want to start searching? On the left of the hill, the left of the max. Click once. Where do you want to stop searching? Right there. And sure enough, the max is at 0, 4. Uh, you can find them in the same exact way. Uh, set up the table. So sometimes we need the just the XY chart. So we're going to go to menu, table, split screen. Here's my table. But let's say I really need to know the numbers at 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and so forth. You can see here in my table, these are my x values. And it's not giving me 1.5 or 2.5. Here's the first function and the second function. Scroll to the right or left to see those swatches. So I want to set up my table because it's not giving me what I want. Menu, table, edit table. Where do you want the table to start? Sure, I want it to start at 0. I don't want it to change by 1, I want it to change by 0.5. Everything else is fine, hit OK. And let's see if it gave me that information. It's kind of hard to see here, but there's my 1.5. If I got rid of the F2, you would probably see 1.5, but um, the table now gives me 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so forth. The X and the Y. So that's how you set up the table and how you view your table. How do you exit this? Continue. Table. And I'm going to remove the table. And it brings me back to this one. And then the last feature is actually very important for the AP test. How to store values. So these numbers are going to be very important, the x and the y. And I don't want to write these over and over in the calculator. Once it's in the calculator, you really shouldn't have to type it in again. 
So I'm going to click once. It's highlighted. Over here on the keyboard, you can see there's STO above bar. Hit Control Store. It's asking, where do you want to store it? What letter? I like to use A, B, C, D to store all my intersection points. So I'm going to call this one um, B, actually, because it's the one on the left. Enter. You can see it changes colors. It tells you, if I hover over it, this is linked to letter B now. Um, I want to store this one to be A. Usually, the left one is A and the right one is B, so you're going to ho hover over it, click once, Control, Store. And I'm going to call that A. And there it is again. Now, to show you the full feature of the calculator, I'm going to pull up a, a random sheet here. So I'm going to go Control, Page, Calculator. And let's say I want to integrate something. I can hit from A up, up to B. I have the functions program, so there's no reason for me to type it in again. So if you hit var, there's, there are these features, right? Let's say I want to integrate f1 or f2. Let's do f2. Of x dx. Enter. It gives me the value. And just to verify that I got it right, here's letter A. Here's letter B. Let's go back. A and B. Sure enough, it's correct. Okay. So that's how you store the, uh, the values, your intersection points, or whatever you need, and you can use it at any time on any of your screens. And assuming you're on problem one, if I'm on problem two, I'm not sure what that looks like. Document. Insert problem, um, say calculator. If I type in what A is, it doesn't know what A is, which is fine because that's problem two. And you can see if I go up, all these slides up here are problem one, and that's problem two. So there's no conflict. And that concludes this video.